Because the human body cannot store oxygen, it must continually supply tissues and cells with oxygen through the combined actions of the respiratory and circulatory systems. The respiratory system includes the lungs and the airway, the passage from the mouth and nose to the lungs. Expansion of the chest during breathing causes suction, which pulls outside air containing oxygen through the airway and into the lungs. Relaxation of the chest increases the pressure within and forces used air to be exhaled from the lungs. The circulatory system includes the heart and a body-wide network of blood vessels. Electrical impulses stimulate contractions of the heart to create pressure that pushes blood throughout the body. Blood vessels in the lungs absorb oxygen from inhaled air. The oxygen-rich blood goes to the heart, then out to the rest of the body. Large vessels called arteries carry oxygenated blood away from the heart. Arteries branch down into very small vessels that allow oxygen to be absorbed directly into body cells so it can be used for energy production. Veins return oxygen-poor blood back to the heart and lungs where the cycle repeats. The brain is especially sensitive to a lack of oxygen. When oxygen is cut off to the brain, brain cell damage and death can occur within a matter of minutes. Hey Christy, how are you? Pretty good, thanks. Hey Christy. Hey buddy. Hey Jim, we're due in the training room in a few minutes. Are you ready? Wow, I did not realize the time. Here you go. Thanks. Thanks for coming and getting me. <laughs> no worries. I'd be right there with you if Bodhi here hadn't come and got me. <laughs> yeah, a common occurrence. I do it because it makes you feel important. Cardiac arrest is the loss of the heart's ability to pump blood to the body. The most dramatic occurrence, sudden cardiac arrest, can happen with little or no warning. Victims abruptly become unresponsive and collapse. Abnormal gasping can occur. Breathing may stop completely. The most likely cause of sudden cardiac arrest is an unexpected disruption to the heart's electrical system in which normally organized electrical pulses within the heart become disorganized and a chaotic quivering condition known as ventricular fibrillation occurs. Blood flow to the body, along with the oxygen it carries, stops. Without blood flow, brain damage occurs rapidly and quickly leads to death. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR, is the immediate treatment for a suspected cardiac arrest. CPR allows a bystander to restore limited oxygen to the brain through a combination of chest compressions and rescue breaths. However, CPR alone is not enough. The most effective way to end fibrillation is defibrillation using a defibrillator and electrode pads applied to the chest. A controlled electric shock is sent through the heart to stop ventricular fibrillation, allowing the heart's normal electrical activity to return and restore blood flow. Successful defibrillation is highly dependent on how quickly defibrillation occurs. For each minute in cardiac arrest, the chance of surviving goes down by about 10%. After as few as 10 minutes, survival is unlikely. Simply activating EMS will not help. Even in the best EMS systems, the amount of time it takes from recognition of the arrest to EMS arriving at the site of the victim is usually longer than 10 minutes. An automated external defibrillator, or AED, is a small, portable computerized device that is simple for anyone to operate. Bystander use of AEDs has been growing steadily with common placements of the devices in public locations such as airports and hotels and workplaces in general. Turning on an AED is as simple as pushing a power button. Once it is on, an AED provides voice instructions to guide you through its use. Remove clothes from patient's chest. An AED automatically analyzes the heart rhythm. Analyzing heart rhythm. Determines if a shock is needed 
and charges itself to be ready to defibrillate. Shock advised. Stay clear. An operator simply pushes a button to deliver the shock when prompted by the AED. Sudden cardiac arrest can strike at any age, but primarily affects adults. The chain of survival is often used to describe the best approach for treating sudden cardiac arrest. Each link in the chain is essential for a person to survive. If a single link is weak or missing, the chances for survival are greatly reduced. The greatest chance for survival exists when all the links are strong. Early recognition of cardiac arrest and activation of EMS. Immediate CPR with high-quality chest compressions. Rapid defibrillation or electrical shock to the heart. Effective basic and advanced EMS care and transport and effective post-cardiac arrest care at a hospital. Unlike sudden cardiac arrest, in which the heart is the primary problem, cardiac arrest can also be the end result of the loss of an airway or breathing. This is secondary cardiac arrest. Problems such as hazardous breathing conditions in a confined space, drowning, and drug overdoses can result in secondary cardiac arrest. With no incoming oxygen, the heart progressively becomes weaker until signs of life become difficult or impossible to assess. If the heart is simply too weak to create obvious signs of life, immediate CPR, with an emphasis on effective rescue breaths, may be the only chance to restore them. The abuse of opioid drug is serious and a growing health problem. Increasing prescriptions for opioid pain relievers have made them more commonly available. The use of heroin is also contributing to the problem. As a result, overdoses and deaths from prescription opioids and heroin have risen dramatically. Opioids taken in excess can depress and stop breathing. Opioid overdose is a clear cause of secondary cardiac arrest. Naloxone, also known as Narcan, is a medication that can temporarily reverse the life-threatening effects of opioids. It is easy to administer, either through an auto-injector device or through an aerosol that is sprayed into the nose. Naloxone is becoming more readily available to lay providers. It is reasonable to provide education and training on responding to suspected opioid overdoses, including the administration of naloxone to those most likely to be involved with this type of emergency. Laws regarding first aid administration of naloxone vary by city and state. As with Good Samaritan laws, know the laws in your area. Children are more likely to experience a secondary cardiac arrest instead of a primary one. This is an important consideration in how you approach a child or infant you think may have arrested. When describing age groups in relation to CPR, an infant is younger than one year of age. A child is one year of age until the onset of puberty. Puberty can be identified by breast development in females and the presence of armpit hair in males. The chain of survival for children includes the following links. Prevention of airway and breathing emergencies. Early CPR with an emphasis on effective rescue breaths and if needed, defibrillation with an AED. Prompt activation of EMS effective basic and advanced EMS care and transport, and effective post-cardiac arrest care at a hospital.